You were there for his cute banana Gerber gibberish, but gone before words cartwheeled off his tongue. You held him up in your arms and showed him off to the world like Simba, Hakuna Matata days. This poem starts off so cute, but there's already some darkness to it. What do you mean? Well, the first line is about a baby. Banana Gerber is a kind of baby food, so I picture a dad feeding a baby who can't even talk yet. Why do you think it's a dad? Well, the poem is called Gift Wrapped Fathers, right? Titles can give clues to what a poem is about. Right, of course. And when I look at the second line, I see what you mean about it getting dark. It says he's gone before words cartwheeled off his tongue. So the dad must be gone before the baby even talks. Cartwheeled off his tongue is such a happy way of saying that the baby turned into a kid who could talk, which somehow makes it extra sad that the dad's not there anymore. Then the third line is back talking about the kid being a baby. It says the dad held him up like Simba. Do you remember that scene from The Lion King? No, I never saw that. I don't think. Really? I've seen it like 20 times. Simba's the main character. He's a lion who's supposed to grow up to be king. And right after he's born, another character holds him up to the sky. Everyone's so happy and hopeful. If you never saw the movie, you probably don't know what Hakuna Matata means, huh? No. What is it? It just means no worries. It's the name of a cheerful song in the movie. So, to me, these lines show that there was a time when this was a happy family. Right. Then the next part says, Before you fell like timber, he made a convenience store out of your heart. Open all night eyes, baby monitor ears by the bedside, alert and on patrol to any sound, one minute microwave milk runs, wrist drop temperature checks. Before you fell like timber, makes it seem like the dad's departure was really dramatic, like a big tree completely falling over and dying. But the dad in this poem doesn't actually die, right? I don't think so, but his leaving is a big deal. It's really the end of something. I know the poem is addressed to someone else. It says you and your throughout, but I get the feeling that the speaker is actually talking about himself. Why do you think that? Because sometimes when people are mad at themselves, that's the way they talk to themselves in their head. Or maybe the speaker is talking about anyone who might have been in a similar situation. I think most parents would say that having a kid makes a convenience store out of your heart, meaning it's open all the time. That's a good metaphor. Oh, I get it. Open all night eyes is like a convenience store that's open all night. Yeah, and then it says they have baby monitor ears by the bedside. I know what that was like from when my little sister was born. My parents always had that monitor beside them so they could keep an eye on her even when she was in her crib. The next lines also make it sound like this is a good, attentive dad who's involved in every detail, down to the temperature of the milk. Yeah, but we know it doesn't really stay that way because the intro says we're reading about an imprisoned parent. We know the dad is gone, and maybe the question is whether you can be a good dad if you're imprisoned. Maybe the rest of the poem will tell us more.